Computer science majors have one advantage over other high income paying college majors. And that is that all you need to actually work in the field is this and this. So today I'm going to show you how you as a computer science major can actually start making money right now before you even graduate. Now these are not some things that I read off some article and I'm theoretically trying to tell you how to make money. These are things that I've actually done myself and have worked and I'm also going to tell you some ways to balance this stuff along with your schoolwork along the way. The first way to make money as a computer science major is actually by providing your services as a freelance software developer. Developer. Now I've made as much as $250 per hour with this method. Now to be clear, not every single job will be this high paying and on a more conservative side, I've made about $50 to $60 per hour. Now as a quick note, these are US figures. But I'm just learning, but I don't know how to build websites. What if I can't build I'm a new? I'm not qualified. No one's going to hire a beginner. beginner. What if I mess up? What if they don't like Stop. my work? You don't need to be a master programmer to actually build software for other people. And if you don't believe me, I actually started building software for people just after taking my second programming class. The reality is that you don't have to be the best programmer and nor do you have to know how to do everything. As long as you have a solid understanding of fundamentals, you can learn to do things on the job. A lot of the things I know now are things that I've known because I've gone out of my way and learned things on my own rather than rely on my classes to teach me stuff. On top of that, I've also learned a lot of the things from the jobs I've done. However, what is important is to not take on jobs that you know you just can't do. For example, it doesn't make sense to take on a job where you're building a whole e-commerce website with custom payment options if you have no idea how to do that. Instead, stick to things you know. So if that comes in the form of building command line applications, then do that. And I know that not having as many skills will mean that you have less jobs out there. However, take it from my personal experience, you can still find jobs. Knowing what you can and can't do just comes with experience. The more personal projects you work on and the more people you work with, the more your skills will expand, the more confidence you'll have. And overall, you just have a better understanding of what you can and can't do as a programmer. So assuming that you're actually convinced about doing this freelance work, how do you actually find clients? Well, there's a few popular online sources such as Fiverr and Upwork, which is like the go-to destinations for finding freelancers. However, I personally haven't used those. The way I get clients is through a variety of online sources. More specifically, that's online forums and marketplaces. For example, For Hire is a subreddit where I have found the majority of my gigs. It's actually where I found the $250 gig that I mentioned before. Another place where I found my gigs is actually using classified sites such as Craigslist and Kijiji. Going into detail about how I specifically use these sources is just outside of the scope of this video. However, if you want to know how I use those, let me know in the comments down below and if it gets enough requests, I'll consider making a video about it. Now, if building software for other people is just not for you, you can always build software for yourself that in return makes you money. Now, I won't sugarcoat this. This. this is starting a business and starting a business is not easy by any means, especially considering all the skills that go into starting a business. And then if you're doing it on your own, that's just adds to the level of difficulty. I personally have a bunch of projects that I made with the intention to make me money and they just never went anywhere. However, if you have a good idea, that can be very profitable. A while back, I started Cellphone.io. Cellphone is a buyback service that lets you sell your phones, hence the name, as well as tablets and laptops. And then on the back end, the way the business actually makes money is by reselling these devices at a profit to other businesses, organizations, or just everyday people who want to buy phones. The cell phone website, as well as other internal tools that were used to run the business, is actually all code that was written by me. So this kind of gives you an idea of how you can use your skills to build a business, which in turn will give you back revenue. Currently, cell phone is not in business simply because I've realized that it takes a lot of my time to actually run the business. And as a computer science student, I actually needed time to focus on my studies. 
As of now, it actually serves as a project that sits on my resume as a way for me to show employers things that I've done in the past. However, during active periods, Southland actually gets over 2,000 website visitors every month, and I've taken it from $0 to over $80,000 in revenue. Now, revenue is not the same thing as profit, but the reason I mention it is because it gives you an idea of how much work I was putting into this thing. The reason I keep bringing up this time thing is because as a student, I think that if you want to go the business route, you should think about building something that gives you the flexibility to not only run the business, but actually give you time to focus on your studies. For cell phone, the main drawback was that I was doing a lot of shipping in, in a lot of various forms. And because of that, it was taking up a lot of my time. And that just comes down to cell phone being a part software and a part service business. So the two things have to come together for the business to actually work. So if you're interested in going into this route, I would much more recommend going into the software as a service or SaaS business model, which essentially will let you trade your time to build a piece of software, which can eventually even become more passive income compared to you having a service-based business that requires a lot of more time up front. Another way that you can make money as a computer science student is by tutoring other students. Now, this is actually my main gig now just because it provides me the greatest flexibility around my school schedule. At the beginning, during the summer when I started this, I actually had five students going on. And then I realized that as classes started, that was way too much to handle. So I dropped down to a much more manageable two. With that said, I do have two tips that will make your work as a tutor a lot easier while also being a student. And the first tip is to actually adopt virtual tutoring sessions. All of my tutoring sessions are remote using software like Zoom and Replit to work collaboratively. By offering virtual tutoring sessions, you have the ability to go from your schoolwork to tutoring to back to your schoolwork really, really quick without having to compromise and commute anywhere to meet any persons that you're tutoring. As an added bonus, because we're currently in this whole coronavirus pandemic, it's a lot more acceptable to your students and therefore it doesn't provide any friction which will just make it easier for you to actually get customers the second tip i have for you is to focus on the easy stuff during classes i exclusively only teach introduction classes and that's because as an experienced software developer i don't have to spend a bunch of time with students learning material for the classes to actually teach them of course it's also worth noting that if you do want to go ahead and teach some more advanced classes you could actually potentially even charge more which might be beneficial to you however as a student worrying about my own classes it makes a lot more sense for me to teach easy stuff and as a result of that just have more time for my own classes so how do you actually find students to tutor well, if you're a computer science student, you pretty much have the mother load, right? You have your own classes. Uh, a lot of schools have things such as discords and Facebook groups and Reddit groups, whatever those are, subreddits for a specific school. It's just a matter of actually posting your services and seeing if there's anyone who actually is interested in your services. I have one more way that you can actually make money as a computer science student and that is by consulting. Now, consulting is actually a really nice mix between tutoring and offering your services as a freelance software developer. And if you know what you're talking about and you do this right, it's actually pretty easy and pretty profitable. And the way this works is by simply hopping on a call with someone and sharing your knowledge about a specific topic. Now, I've made as much as $50 for 30 minutes of my time which considering that where I live, minimum wage is about $15 per hour, is a pretty profitable gig. And finding customers to actually talk to is not much different than the actual freelance work. It's just a matter of maybe going into forums and finding someone who's non-technical and they're trying to build something that is, maybe they're trying to build their own startup or do something, and it's just finding them and talking about your knowledge. And it's actually really straightforward. So those are the ways that you can make money as a computer science student. Now, if you decide to try any of these, let us know in the comments below, because I'm curious to know how, how things pan out for you. And then also, if you have any ideas of your own on how we as computer science students can make money, let us know in the comments below. Um, also, in general, if you have any questions about anything that I talked about in this video, uh, the comments below is a really good place just to ask the questions. And if you're new here, welcome. If you're enjoying the content, 
consider subscribing. Um, and with that said, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.